Bible forewarns of a looming day of great judgment. The Bible forewarns of a looming day of great judgment. The following is a dire warning from the book of Revelation. Did you ever ask yourself this question? Will my name be written in the Lamb's book of life? If you haven't, you should. Eternal life is promised for those whose name is written in this book. But eternal damnation awaits those whose names are absent. This video explains how to be assured that your name is written in the book of life. Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and on his way back. There is no other way. This is a warning for all those whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, who have rejected the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Take heed. And I, John, saw a great way thrown, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. All people have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You must repent of your sins and believe that Jesus died for your sins. Ask God to save you, so you can be assured that your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God wants to have a relationship and fellowship with you here on earth because He loves you. It's not only about heaven or hell. He wants you to worship and obey Him now with a holy life. Imagine the God of the universe cares so much He desires an intimate relationship with you. So today, receive the sacrifice of Jesus for your sins. Tomorrow may be too late. I know that's a, a pretty stark um, video. One of the things I want to share with you this morning is we went through Revelation 20 last week, and we we're talking about this. And um, I, I want you to see, look, no matter how you want to look at things, there is going to be judgment. You can't escape the fact the Bible talks about judgment. Some people will say, well, you know, that's harsh and, and everything. But realize, all the stuff that we looked in Revelation, it's harsh. You can't look at the book of Revelation and not say, there's things that are going to happen here that are going to be harsh. And, um, and maybe it came across in a way that's, you know, some unpleasant. But I just want you to realize something. You don't have to go through that. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have to go through that. You're not going to go through. That. See, 
the best thing we talk about Revelation is we see in chapters 4 and 5 that he takes the church to be with him in heaven. He takes the believers to be with him in heaven. So you're not going to be in that place where, when we talked about it last week, you're going to see every single thing you ever did. Okay? I just want to make sure you get to every single thing you ever did. And I don't know how you feel about that one, but I don't feel good about that one either. So, right? And, and so when you look at it and you go, man, I, I want what God offers me, which is his grace. And see, he loves us so much that he's given us one and only son so that we can identify with who God is and what God's able to do, which is redeem us from sin. And then have a relationship with God and realize that, you know what? We don't have to live this life in fear. We don't have to live in, in condemnation. We can live and enjoy serving God. We can be happy. And look, I got hit last week. I'm still happy. Okay? So no matter what happens, is you, you're, you're, you can be happy. Like, you can look at things and be happy. So I, I wanted to share that and, and understand. Um, I know some people walk out and go, boy, that was, was harsh. But realize something. There are going to be people who face that and, and stand before that. And it's not someplace I want to be. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be there. So that said, I'm going to ask you to turn to the third page in your bulletin, uh, if you have it, announcements. I'm just going to go through some of our announcements. We are planning on doing Bible study tomorrow night. Um, uh, I've been doing the book of Isaiah. Um, I'm, I'm planning to do it, so it's 7 o'clock. Krista will make um, dinner, too, for anybody who wants to get there early, usually, you know, by quarter after 6, 6.30. Um, she usually has the food ready, so if you want to come and join us. But we are going through the book of Isaiah. Um, we're talking right now about one of the things we're talking about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven what the difference is and I'll, I'll probably address that um, I didn't have Bible study last week because I just didn't feel up to it after being hit on Friday so um, that said we'll do that then days next one will be the 25th of July um, the 13th we will do a wave Pam and George will be here for that the 13th that'll be up the top of the street here I know I'm doing a baby dedication and it looks like maybe one baptism so and then if you're interested in getting baptized baptism is a step I might as well explain all this stuff while I'm getting into it here um, but baptism is a step of obedience when you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior the next step is to basically be obedient and Jesus says to get baptized and the reason we get baptized is we're signifying the newness of life we die in our life to Christ and our raised in the resurrection of what Christ has done for us. And that's what baptism is a symbol of. We are going to do um, probably a, a much bigger baptism on the 24th of August at the Wave. And right now I think we've got at least eight or nine people that are interested. If you're interested in, in being baptized that night, um, please come and see me and talk to me um, and we'll make that as part of the Wave that night. But um, that night as well, George and Pam will be here to do the worship for, for the Wave, which takes place up the top of the street here in that little gazebo. So that said, now, some of the other things that are taking place. I'm going to have a VBS meeting today after, after church. Please, um, please stay. If you can help us, please stay. I, I am going to be the one who's going to be leading VBS this year, um, it looks like. So I brought the VBS um, stuff here. If you're interested in helping, we were going to uh, kind of happen last minute. Some things happened, so I'm going to be taking it over and doing it. Um, we'd like to see who's interested in helping. We're going to do it from the 15th to the 19th. So, and I will have, Crystal, oh, we'll get the meeting started. I'll come back and join us once um, we're service is over. But we will have a meeting in the back. So if you can help in one way or another, please stay back, come back and, and find out what you can do and what you're interested in. So we'll go through some of the things and try and, and get an idea of what we have. We only have a couple weeks left before this happens, so I don't have a lot of time. Um, the way this all happened, it kind of fell into having to do this last um, me taking it over, so I'm going to do it and try to do what I can to the best of my abilities. So pray for me, please. Okay, pray for me that we get this because we want to do we want to do something extra special for the kids. So, and then also um, some of the other things here. We do have a food pantry in the back. If you need food or if you know someone needs it, we have it there. Um, we're in the process of trying to restock it as m more as well. Um, our new information class, I typically do one where if you want to find out more information about the church, you want to find out more about the church um, believes, where we stand on things, this one will be the 21st of July, um, Sunday after service, so you can join us for that as well. Our expressive art class, Laurie leads that. That will take place on the 13th of July, so um, if you're interested in that, see that. And also, we do a, a game night once a month, and this next one will be July 12th. And then, um, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, the VBS meeting, we'll see how it goes. I can't assure that it'll be brief. I want to find out 
what and where we're headed with everything. So that said, let's get up and pass the peace of God to one another this morning. Okay, if you're able to get back to your seats and stand up, we'll do the call to worship together. And while, as you're getting back to your seats, I'll explain. I know I normally don't wear shorts to church. The only reason I'm wearing them this morning is I put them all, I put pants on, and my pants kept ripping my scab open, even with a Band-Aid on it, and I kept bleeding through my pants. So I didn't want to have bloody pants as I sat here this morning. So, okay. So that said, we're going to do the call to worship. I'll read non-bold, read bold. It says, the Lord is, the Lord our hope is in you. Lord, no one and nothing can ever compare with you. Our kingdom and his our king and his kingdom is the only eternal kingdom for all of mankind. Jesus is coming back soon and very soon for each one of us who is born again in him. With gratefulness and joy, we shout, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. So we're going to sing Our God Reigns this morning. Have anything they want to share that God's done in your life this week? Get okay, Suzanne. Well, Donna, two weeks later in New Hampshire, was coming on Tuesday to take Tyler. So she's coming to visit. Amen. Yeah. Good, good. So, yeah. anybody? Get, get, get you. Tired, but we have another dog living in the forever family. So thank God. Amen. It's been a wonderful few days, few weeks. So Amen. Thank you, God. <laughs> okay, anybody? Anything else? Get, get. Oh, Georgia, yes. Georgia, get. Amen. 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 I pray that my surgeon, Mark Perlmutter, has instilled the desire to know God because I want to thank him. I feel my character is very good. And all of you for your prayers, your hard, your small, your really, your really So I, I need to ask you a question because for the last so many years you keep telling me that he's going to like die five years before you, right? Okay. So all that said, do you, is he still going to die earlier or is he going to live a little bit longer now? No, I keep saying I'm going to go through it. <laughs> okay. 
she, she always used to joke, he's going first, okay? So, um, so but anybody, anything else you want to share? Get them. Amen. Amen. Yep. Yep. And and everybody who helped, um, and people who were here. I mean, it was really it was and it's great. It was a good. It was really a good time. Yep. So so thank you and um, and Bill for all the time you put into it as well. So thank you. So. 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 Anybody? Anything else you want to share? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Amen. We, we're good. Okay, we love having you. Amen. So, um, anybody, anything else? Uh, I'm glad my stitches are out. So, amen for that. Okay, so let, let's say, um, let's sing, this, let's just praise the Lord. Now, uh, <laughs> Russ, if, 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 they were, if they were reusable, okay, with all the, all the scars I had, they would have had plenty, of, plenty to use for this one. So, um, okay. <laughs> Good. I like that good one, Russ. Okay, so we're going to sing. Let's just praise the Lord. <laughs> Let's just pray. going to have, um, um, at this point, I'm going to have Mike, Mike's going to come down and he's going to read from Isaiah, so. I just didn't know how many times we were going through that, so just to three. Good morning, everybody. This morning's re reading is from Isaiah 25. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Praise the Lord. Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. You have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin, the foreigners stronghold a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will honor you. Cities of ruthless nations will revere you. You have been a refuge for the poor, a refuge for the needy in their distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like a driving storm against a wall, and like the heat of the desert. You silence the uproar of foreigners as heat is reduced by the shadow of a cloud. So the song of the ruthless is stilled. On the mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, 
they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord, we trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The hand of the Lord will rest on the mountain, but Moab will be trampled in their land as straw is trampled down in the manure. They will stretch out their hands in it as swimmers stretch out their hands to swim. God will bring down their pride despite the cleverness of their hands. He will bring down your high fortified walls and lay them low. He will bring them down to the ground to the very dust. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Michael. Good job. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the great in the great and awesome name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask that you would move in power this morning. That Lord, um, as you come before you, Lord, we bring so many various things to, to with us here. And Lord, we want to cast them aside. We want to cast them on you, Lord, whether they're spiritual, whether they're physical, whether they're emotional, whatever they may be, Lord, we're, we're, we're turning them over to you. And we are going to this morning, just take the time to praise and worship you. Lord, we thank you that we've been given today. This is such a glorious day to be able to praise and worship our Savior. And so Lord, we want to do that this morning. We want to just take this time, Lord, for, when everyone else is, is so preoccupied with so many other things, Lord, we're just going to focus on you this morning. We're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you the honor. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, we want you to be glorified in all that we do this morning. Lord, as we go through this day, that we glorify you. That, Lord, we honor and we just, Lord, just lift, make that name of Jesus one that when we say it, it has such meaning to our hearts. That, Lord, it speaks to those that are around us as well. And that, Lord, this would be a day that in our hearts we would definitely see a change in the way that we approach you. We would approach you as the one who is all things incredible awesome, magnificent, worthy, that, Lord, we would just be humbled by who you are. We ask that this morning in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, well, we're going to, at this time, we're going to take the offering. So if I could have our ushers come down. Would you please rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You can stay standing. Dave is going to come up and lead us in a worship song. Oops. Let's continue worshiping with 10,000 Reasons. Sing, Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing the sun. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great 
and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find so bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your holy name and on that day when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore forevermore to bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your holy name lord i worship your holy name lord i worship your holy Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we go into your word this morning, I just pray that you would speak to our hearts and that, Lord, we would see you uh, afresh anew, that, Lord, we would we would get a sense of just the power of your Holy Spirit and, Lord, um, what you've called us to be and what you call us to do. And, Lord, I just pray that in everything that we look at and all that we talk about this morning, that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can take your seats. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 21 this morning. So, um, and, as, and looking through this, and one of the things that... Um, in, in Revelation, and we're, we're going to finish up Revelation um, next month, so we're, we're one month away, right? We're, 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 <laughs> we're <laughs> it's July, it's, it's still June, it's still June, you got you, see, I tricked you, ah, see, got her, she thought, thought I was talking an extra month, see, he got you, so um, we, we will be done by July, it looks like by July 23rd, we will be done, so um, so, so, okay, so we, we will, we should finish it, okay? Huh? It's okay. Well, I just, I knew that when I said it that way, somebody would go, wait a minute, it's July, no, we'll finish in July. So, um, but all that said, as we, as we get in, into chapter 21, and um, a lot of times when I do funerals, this is what I close with um, the first five or six verses of, of Revelation 21, because it gives us hope. And all the things that we talk about, see, as a believer in Jesus Christ, the, the, the incredible thing about Revelation is you, you can see the judgments, but it's the love that he has for his kids. You see God's incredible love in, in Revelation if you understand when he's talking. Like, see, when John gets this revelation, remember, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. When we started this, we started this in chapter 1. We talked about this is the revelation of Jesus. This is a revelation of who Jesus is and what Jesus is about. So as you look at this, you have to realize something. As you sit here this morning, when he talks these words, he's talking to us. And he's talking to us about, you know what? It isn't always going to be this way. You're not always, see, anybody here hurt? Anybody have any pain? Okay. Anybody have family issues? Okay. Anybody have physical issues? Financial issues? Okay. Emotional issues? Once you start putting it out there, you realize something. We're all struggling with things because of the nature of living in a sinful world, okay? And so we have this thing. Even if you don't have any problems, you're getting older, <laughs> okay? So no matter if you want to see you go, I'm good, well, you're getting old, okay? Every day you wake up, guess what? As you're sitting here, you can't even sit here and not get old, okay? As you're sitting in your chair right now, you're getting old, okay? And think about this. How much time in your life have you wasted? Right? Because I remember when I was five and six and seven and all that. But as you get older, one of the things that happens is you realize that time slips away fast. 
Somebody was talking to me at the pancake breakfast yesterday going, you know what? It's unfair. As you get older, the clock moves faster. Right? <laughs> That's what they're, they're saying. You know, it moves faster. Like, when I was younger, I could get more done. Now I have a whole list of things, and I don't even get anything done on the list I wrote out. <laughs> right? And time moves, and that way you look at it and you go, wait, wait a minute, okay? As you look at these things, you realize that God isn't done because God is going to give us, we, we have, with Jesus Christ, once we believe in him, we have eternal life, okay? So it's eternal, that it doesn't stop, okay? And I look at this and I think, man, you know, even the picture that Krista picked out, like, you look at that picture and, and you, you, like, you go, well, Here's God. Is that what it's going to be like? Oh, man. I have another video I'll show next week. The video I'll show next week will not be as, as powerful as the judgment seat, but it will talk about what heaven's supposed to look like, okay? And think about this. I, I, when I was looking at this video, it says just the first floor of heaven is 2.25 million square feet. Okay. The first floor, yes, because when it describes heaven, it talks about it's, it's 15,000 miles, I mean, 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles, or it calls it stata, and it's a measure. But um, as you see this, and we'll talk about this next week because we'll get into that, but as you look at this, you have to realize something. God, Jesus said, you know, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And I go to prepare a place for you, and if I have, I'll come back for you, Okay. Now, he left 2,000 years ago. I don't know about you, but I've watched a lot of construction on the island happen lately, and it takes a while, okay? But imagine Jesus left 2,000 years ago to construct a place for us, what that place looks like, right? No eyes, no eyes seen, no ears heard what God has created for us. And as you, you, you get into this and you look at this, you have to realize, man, when, what God has in store for those he loves is going to be incredible, so you want to have a relationship with him. And so it says here, then I saw a new heaven and new earth. Okay, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. Now, a number of things I'll point out here, okay. There is going to be a new heaven and new earth. So all the stuff that you have on this earth, guess what? You think you can take it with you. Okay, no matter what happens, guess what? And the video will talk about it a little bit. You're going to watch these things because Peter, first, Peter talks about it. He's going to burn it up. It's going to be gone. And he's going to create this new heaven, new earth. But we're going to exist with him. And so you think about that. All the stuff that you put your trust in, all the things that you held on to, all the things that you thought had value, guess what? They're worthless. The only thing that should matter to you should be the relationship and the people that you have relationships with. Okay. Now, the interesting thing here is it says no longer have any C, right? So I, I, I've spent some time looking at things over the last couple of days. And um, it's interesting because this word is only used a couple of times in the whole New Testament. And it really seems to be in relationship to an inland sea. Okay. So I don't say there won't be water. Okay. I think there will be water because I think we love water, don't we? Especially us that live here, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but every time I ride across the bridge, whether it's this bridge or Manilokan Bridge, what, what do you look at? Yeah. Well, you should be looking at the road if you're driving. That's why I get hit on my bike, okay? If you people would look where you're going, okay, I would not get hit. Okay, so there we go, okay? Now I know who's not looking at the road when you're going across. Now I'm really afraid, okay? I'm really, really afraid, okay? Um, but... All that said, as you, as you look at this, right, you get this feeling that God is going to create something really special for us, right? Because he's going to do this for all the believers. He's going to create a new heaven and new earth. This is going to be something he's created especially for us. And think about it. It's going to be incredible, right? I mean, we're going to talk about the streets of gold and all those things. Realize something. Gold is going to be worthless, Yeah. Gold is worthless, but we put so much value in it. How many times do you see commercials? Gold is the new standard. Gold, buy gold now, buy gold, right? They want you to buy gold, right? So I can pave heaven with it, <laughs> right? So, so you, you got this picture, and I, I really want you to understand this. As a believer, you should have such joy that he's creating a place, a place that isn't tainted by sin, that isn't going to be destroyed by anything, and it's going to have a beauty, and it's, it's going to sparkle in such a way, and it's going to radiate in such a way that you'll never, see, 
the reason things in transparent, and I'm probably getting ahead of myself, the reason things in heaven are transparent is because the glory of God is what's going to light it up, and it's going to make this place shine. So even from the outside, it's going to radiate the beauty of God's glory. And guess where we're going to be? We're going to be there. Okay? So you get to verse 2. And verse 2 says, look, I saw the holy city. So you see New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, right? It's coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Now realize something. When you, you get this imagery, if you get this imagery in your heart, when you look at brides, right? When, when brides are dressed, you know, I don't know how, I've done so many weddings now. The, the most emotional part is the bride walking down to be with the groom. And the, the, the parent, whether it's a father or you know, somebody because the father has passed away. But when they come down and you have that, there's something about that moment when you watch her walk down, like you think, man, like this is the moment. And as you think about this, here's God. He's got New Jerusalem coming down, just like a bride coming down the aisle. So he's going to have us, right? with him so that we can be there with him in New Jerusalem. And he's prepared this place and realized, he says, I saw the holy city. That means it's going to be a place of holiness. You got that? No more sin, no more suffering, no more pain, no more people cheating one another, no more people doing things wrong to one another, no more people plotting and scheming, no more politicians. Okay. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. If you can't say the praise the Lord at that one, you're in trouble, okay? Say praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. No more politicians, okay? And if you're a politician, sorry, okay? But we ain't going to have any more of you, okay? So that's how it goes, okay? And realize, because who's going to reign and rule? God. And see, the reason God always talks about the image of marriage is because the beauty, if marriage works right the way it's supposed to be, is a husband and wife should be pointed towards Christ. Okay? And the husband's supposed to lift his wife up and make her spotless. Okay? Stainless. It's supposed to show and reveal her to be something what she's supposed to be. It's spectacular in God. Okay? Which makes him all the more spectacular because the two come together to be one. Right? So realize, that's the beauty of this. The beauty of this is nature of what God created to be. Now, hey, look, sin messes things up. And relationships don't always work out the way they're supposed to work out. But there's a beauty in this, and you should grasp and hold that beauty and go, wow, this is something I can't wait to see. Think about it. Brides always, always, I've never seen a bride go, well, I'm not really going to worry about myself today. <laughs> right? Ladies, when you get ready for a wedding... And, and now I know because I've done enough weddings. There is usually a, a period that you do your hair, right? 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 Is it, you, the hairdresser is a big part of it, okay? And some, uh, I have, I'll share one because I know that person isn't here. This is wedding a couple years ago, okay? She spent three days at the hairdresser. She goes, we're going to the hairdresser on Wednesday. And she goes, we get done on Friday. Okay? She went back three days, okay? And I was like, I want, if I married her, I wouldn't touch her hair for at least a year, okay? <laughs> because there's no way if you spent all that kind of money on your hair, I'm touching your hair because you know, I'm not messing your hair up, right? Okay? But I remember thinking, and you, you, you get your hair done, you got to pick the right dress, right? Right? And, and of fingernails, all, all that stuff, every... Pedicures, you don't want to look at my toes. Okay, but all that stuff, right? The beauty, and, and there's something about that she feels beautiful too. See, when she gets to that point where she's ready to walk down the aisle, she feels beautiful. And then the ceremony makes, I will say, well, everyone, please rise. See, we don't, they don't rise for the guy coming in. Okay, when me and the guy walk in, we walk in, he comes over here. And, yeah. He's like, okay, well, we're ready to go, huh? Right? And then what happens is the bridesmaids walk in, right? The bridesmaids walk in, and when they walk in, okay, they all look beautiful, and there's music playing, but then the door's shut. And I go, well, everyone, please rise. And then the bridal march starts, right? And she stands there, and everybody's got to look, right? Everybody looks in that direction, right? Because the attention is, you know what? This is what we came here for, the union between her and the husband. 
or do, soon to be husband. And you think about that, that's the picture, the image that God's trying to give us here of a whole, the holy city. He's going to have a place that only those who are holy can be. How can we be holy? Only through Jesus Christ, what Christ has done for us on the cross. Okay, so you get to verse 3. Verse 3 says, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be with them, and they will and be their God. Never again will there be distance between man and God. We will be in the presence of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for eternity. And realize something. Time is going to disappear. The way that we measure time now, everything's measured by time, right? It's going to disappear. Imagine being able to not experience pain and suffering, but have joy and have the people that you love around you. And people will ask me, because we're going to get to verse 4, and I'll, I'll, we'll move to verse 4 because I want to share this part of this. He will wipe away every tear. Notice he uses the singular here, right? Every tear from their eyes. There will be no more crying, okay? There will be no more death or mourning or crying, excuse me, or pain for the old order of things that passed away. And think about this, because what he's done here is he's eliminated anything and everything as a, that came as a result of sin. The only reason we suffer and we cry, like, you know, when, when you get stitches, okay, they hurt, okay? <laughs> they do hurt. And one of the things that happens is, is that we see, look, we see the marks that our lives leave on us, right? Our, our lives leave marks because whether you see the outward scars or not, see, the scars that I got on my face from the last time I got hit, they're just scars that remind me I got hit. But we have other scars that we all endure, right? There's mistakes that you've made that you can't forget, right? Right? And, and realize something. What he's going to do here is he's going to allow the fact that you want, you're not going to suffer death anymore. That means you're not going to lose a loved one, okay? You're not going to mourn for things that you don't have or didn't have, okay? You're not going to cry anymore. And it's, it's so powerful because when I, was, when I was studying this and I was going through this, and you talk about this idea of, of crying, right? Um, when you cry, there's a good cry, right? Because when I get hurt, this, I hate to admit this, but I'm going to admit this right now. When I get hurt, like getting hit like this, and I watch movies, I don't know if it's just because you're in a weakened state or whatever it is, but... <laughs> I'm watching movies, and I'm watching this movie about a marriage made in heaven. This guy goes back 10 years because him and his wife had got divorced, and they go back, and I'm crying through this whole movie. Good thing Krista, Krista wasn't there, and I'm crying. And I'm sitting home crying, and, like, and my dogs are like, what's the matter? Okay, so we're sitting there having this interaction, and my dogs are trying to figure out why is tears streaming down his face? Because, I don't know, I'm emotional because, you know, I'm watching this relationship develop and, and he decides he's going to spend time with his wife again and all these things to try and, and fix the marriage. And, and you look at it and you go, you know, we cry. And, and there's something about crying in us that has that emotional connection with whatever we're doing and whether it's the loss of somebody. And that's the thing is what I realize that even tears of happiness is because we realize that either we don't have that loss or we, didn't, we don't experience that loss. Or, you know what, is we just, we, we see something and we're glad that that person went well, okay? And, and I looked at it and I thought, man, or pain. Pain is one of those things where it cripples us. For a lot of people, pain can cripple us. We were talking about back pain and some other things. And uh, Russ and I were actually yesterday a little bit talking about back pain. He said what most people don't realize is when you really have back pain, and they say, like, they tweak their back. They don't really understand back pain and back surgery. Because I know when Kristen went through hers, she couldn't lift her legs up. There was times where she couldn't walk up the steps, okay? And, and you look at it, like pain. People view pain in different ways. But then there's the pain of losing somebody. And when you lose somebody, it doesn't go away. I've, my mom's been gone for over three years now. And there's still time. Another movie. After the first movie, I'm watching another movie, okay? And it's now about this person who dies, and he's missing his mom and everything else. And I'm going, oh, I'm sitting there going. And, then, and now my dog is up on my shoulder. He's licking my face, and he's licking the tears. And he's like, you know, like, just stop crying for a little while, okay? And so I'm watching it, and I'm thinking, you know, like, man, God, there's going to come a day where I'm going to see her, and I'm not going to think about all that hurt. Like, all the hurt that I experienced here, what it should do for me is draw me closer to God. 
But what happens a lot of times is sometimes it makes people isolated from God. They go, oh, I don't want to get close to God. God did this to me. But realize something. Sin did that to you. And where you're at now is God saying, I'm going to remove all that. There's going to come a time where you're not even going to remember it. Isn't that a great part of this? I've done a lot of funerals, and it's been hard. For, you know. And you look at this and go, man, he's, for the old order of things that passed away, it's gone. It's going to be swept away, never to be remembered more. When God talks about this, he uses the word blot. Okay? And, and you know what blot really looks like when you blot something out? You can't tell what was there before, right? When you blot something out, that's the idea is that you, nobody else, because people will even get letters and, you know, try to read them through the light and everything. When you blot something out, you cannot make out what was there before, okay? And that's what that word means. Now, you get to verse 5. Verse 5 says, he was seated on the throne and said, I'm making everything new. This body that has all the stitches and all the scars, right, is going to be new, I get to trade this in, right? And I don't even have to worry about the resale value, right? Isn't that great? He's making all things new. He said, then write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And, and this word for trustworthy and true is only used three times in the whole Bible, twice in Revelation and once in Mark, okay? And when they're used together like this, it's actually the same word over and over again. What it means is he's, he's accentuating that, that these things are the truest, the most true words you could say. And he's saying here, write this down, for these words are as true as you'll ever hear. Okay? And then you get to verse 6. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. Okay? No matter what happens, I started it and I'm going to end it. Right? See, isn't that cool that at least you know one thing about Jesus? Because remember, this is talking about Jesus again, right? He started it all because he, how did he start it, guys? He spoke it into existence, right? He said, let there be. Yep. In the beginning, there was, right? He, he, everything. He did, he did it, right? He spoke it into existence. And he says, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, and, and I want you to grasp this. He's saying to you, if you're thirsty, if you're a believer, okay, if you've accepted Christ, I will give to you. I will give to drink without cost. Again, this is grace, and I want you to make sure you understand this. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost. Okay? It's not what you've done. It's what he's done. Okay? The cost, okay, without cost, from the spring of the water of life. You will have eternal life because you trusted in what Christ has done. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with what he's done. You got that picture? Because... The, the biggest thing is if, if you don't, what will happen is you'll think, well, what can I do to earn this? Or what did I do to gain this? Or what did I do to have this? And realize something. You didn't do anything. Christ did it. And that's the beauty of all this because you can't mess it up. You realize you can't, you can't mess this up? If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can't mess this up. If you don't walk out of here happy about that today, I don't know what's going to make you happy. Okay. I, I really don't know what will make you, you, you should smile. You should walk out of this morning going, man, he's get, I, I, and when I get to heaven, I don't know about you, but man, lately, when you drink really good, and it's interesting, H2O, right? When you drink really good H2O, right? Um, if you ever watch the Adam Sandler movie, right? And he's the water boy, and he talks about really good H2O, okay? If you, if you watch that, <laughs> There's days back there quoting lines already. Okay, if you ever watch that, okay, if you're if you ever watch that, the one thing you realize is he says, mm, "This is really good H2O." Okay, and you think about this, this is really good H2O, right? This is going to be the best because this comes directly from God. Now you get to verse seven. And these are the last two verses I'm going to finish with this morning, but I want you to hear this. He who overcomes, and this word is powerful because when you look at this word, it really says a lot of things here. It can be overcome. It can mean a lot of things, but it's the one who walks with God. What it means here is the one who's achieved his righteousness through God. That's the idea of what it means by overcome in this passage. It means the one who has been judged righteous by God will become an inheritor, right? You will become, see, and it may use um, my son, but the 
inference here is this. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. What happens is you have the rights that would be given to a son in the culture, which means you, whether you're male or female, will receive all the benefits of being inher- receiving that inheritance from God himself. You got that? And I will be his God, and he will be my son. He looks at you as his kid, right? So when you walk out here this morning, no matter how bad your childhood was, no matter how bad your relationships are with your parents or anything else, you've got a God who's going to consider you his kid, right? And love you with everything he has. You will inherit everything he has. Then this is how it finishes with verse 8. And this verse 8 is something interesting here because this verse has an awful lot of stuff in here, okay? But the cowardly. And it's interesting because um, when you look at this word cowardly, it's, it's, I think it's mentioned seven times or eight times in the Bible. And when you see this word, it talks about those who refuse to accept God. And then it says the unbelieving. So the, the idea here is he's definitely stressing that you want to believe, right? But there's eternal life not only for the believer, but the unbeliever. I'm going to show you why. It says, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice, and see, the word here, it says magic arts, but the word here is pharmakia, okay? And that actually means drugs, a use of drugs. There's, it, it, a lot of times it will say magic arts, it will say potions, it will say all these things, but it's the idea of, of drugs and spells and casting spells with drugs. That whole idea is what um, that word means. And it says, idolaters, all the liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Now, the first death comes when? When you die, right? When you physically die. There's a second death. The second death here, now does this mean that they're physically dead? No, this means they're physically separated for eternity from who? from God, okay? So what happens here is when you talk about this lake of, of burning fire, this, this sulfur, this whole thing here, what this means is this was created. We saw Satan and his angels were cast in this in chapter 19, right? Now you see here, you've got this. You've got that second death, and that second death relates to anybody, okay, who were sinners who died in their sins. That's what all these categories here are. And it says they're going to be cast into that same place where Satan and his angels were, were cast into. So that picture that you get here is that, you know what? Judgment's going to take place, and there's going to be a place where they're going to have these bodies. And we're going to talk about they're going to have their, their bodies to be able to be in that place so they can do whatever they want to do, okay? Not necessarily good stuff, but they're going to be able to do or live in this place where there's tormented and there's so suffering and there's pain because without God, with, with separation of God, then it's, it's going to be people doing exactly evil. All, I, I mean, I can't even express the nature of this. Without God, there's no love, there's no joy, there's no peace, there's no contentment. And that's what this place is going to be like. And add to it, you've got the, the sulfur and the, the smells and all the senses of, of anything that would be just disturbing to you. And that's what the second death is. Okay, so you've got that picture now, right? Where, where are we at? We're with him. He's created a new Jerusalem. That's come down. We saw that. But then he's making the picture. He's showing the picture that there are going to be people who do not believe and die in their sins and who are sinners. That's what happens to them. Okay? We'll get into more of what heaven's going to look like next week. So this is where we're at. So if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you sit here this morning, you should be able to go, you know what? This is good news right? Because even the judgment sheet seat that I st- started the video with this morning, you realize that you're not going to experience the judgment seat. You're going to have the judgment seat of Christ. We talked about that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. So you're going to stand before God. You're going to answer for the things that you've done, but you're not going to have to be judged for all your sins because they've been forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ, okay? So you're not going to face all that. But these people, they're going to be, we talked about last week, they're going to open the books, Right? You're going to open the books, and everything you ever did, you're going to get to look at. All the bad stuff you ever did, right? So you want to tell people, you know what? You really don't want to have the books open, right? Because the only one that matters to us is which one? Lamb's Book of Life, which your name is written in, right? You're here this morning. Your name's written there, right? That wasn't everybody. I sure hope all of your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, right? You're, I hope your name, I hope you're walking out and going, Absolutely. 
And look at your neighbor going, I'm in it, okay? <laughs> look to somebody this morning going, I'm in there. Don't know about you, but I'm in there, okay? <laughs> Make sure you tell somebody, my name's in there, okay? My name is in there, okay? Because realize something. You should be so confident of that. And if you're not, you know what? Ask. We'll share how to do that. Ask, okay? But if you're not confident, just ask. Okay. So let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, what a great and awesome God you are. We thank you for the power of your word, for who, who you are, what you're capable of doing. Lord, we pray that this week, that, Lord, we would just focus on you, that we would, Lord, reach out to you, pray to you, speak with you, that, Lord, we would just have a great relationship with you this week, and that, Lord, this would be a week unlike any other we've ever had. We ask this in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. We ask this all in his name. Amen. So David's going to lead us in how great our God is. I just want to remind you again one more time before we close in prayer after Dave's done. We are having a VBS meeting. If you can come back and join us, please come back and join us. Let's all stand and finish with how great is our God. Sing the splendor. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light In darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb. And how great is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Sing the name above all names. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Sing that again, name above all names. You're the name above all names. Worthy of all praise My heart will sing How great is our God Then sings my soul Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great that again then sings then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art and how great 
is our God. Oh, sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Now let's sing that to him. How great are you, God? And how great are you, God? Oh, sing with me how great are you, God? And all will see how great, how great are you, God? Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you praise that we've had the opportunity to worship today. Lord, may we take that joy and the, 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 just the opportunity to worship you. May we take it and make it part of our day through the whole day. And we thank you for this blessing, Lord. We thank you what we've been given. We thank you for the loved ones we have around you, Lord. And we thank you for the body that you call the church that we have here with us this morning. Lord, may we really rejoice that we've been given such a great gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, have a great week. Make sure you give someone a hug before you walk out of there. Have a great week. Yeah.